If you've ever tried to tweak your diet, whether to lose weight, build muscle, or just feel healthier, chances are you've heard differing opinions about protein. Some people say you need a lot, others say a little goes a long way. And then there's all the conflicting advice about plant-based versus animal-based proteins. So how do you know how much protein you really need to fill your body properly? Welcome to the Healthier You Podcast. I'm Dr. Ashley Williams, and today I'm talking with Dr. Christy Youssef, a board-certified family medicine physician here at Kaiser Permanente, to explore how protein works in your body and how much you need depending on your goals and lifestyle, and why it's not always a one-size-fits-all answer. Dr. Youssef, thanks so much for being here today. It is my absolute pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you. So can you talk a little bit about the role that protein plays in our bodies? Absolutely. So if you think about it, protein is an essential macronutrient that our, it allows our body's building blocks to um, continue to build our cells in our body. When we consume protein, our body uh, breaks down that protein into amino acids, and those amino acids go to build and repair our tissues, our muscles, our, our skin. So they're very important to just like the everyday um, functioning of our body system. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference between plant-based protein and animal-based proteins? Absolutely. So when your body breaks down protein, um, they're breaking it down into amino acids. Well, there's 20 amino, different amino acids that are needed for functioning in our body. Um, I, unfortunately, our body cannot produce the, the nine most essential ones. So we get that from the foods that we eat. Um, foods that contain all nine essential amino acids are, are considered complete proteins. So when we look at animal sources of protein and plant sources of protein, we look at animal sources of protein like milk and eggs and dairy and fish. Um, animal sources of protein tend to have all nine essential amino acids, and they are considered um, in, uh, substantial to stand on their own. Um, Plant-based sources of protein, on the other hand, they lack one or more of the essential amino acids, but by incorporating them into our diets and different plant sources of protein into our diets, at the same time, we're able to ensure that we get um, the essential amino acids that we need. Um, now, we know research is pointing that like diets that are high in red meat or processed meats, they can put us at increased risk for certain um, dis diseases such as heart disease, um, most notably heart disease and stroke, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer. So it's important that when you do choose to take animal sources of protein, you choose leaner sources of animal protein um, and not as much, uh, you know, red meat or processed meats. When you're trying to settle down on which plant sources of protein that you can consume, plants, it's, it's important to remember that plants are rich in micronutrients like iron and potassium. So by eating a plant-based uh, proteins, you're getting a variety of macro micronutrients. They're high in antioxidants. They protect your body from stress and inflammation. And then over time, um, you tend to get exactly what you need from the plant sources of protein. Um, it's important that most people who both eat both animal sources of protein and plant-based protein get about two-thirds of their total daily um, uh, protein from plant sources. So what about um, protein sources from supplements or protein power powders? It seems like everything has some kind of protein supplement from granola to ice cream to yogurt. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, Dr. Williams, I get this question a lot, especially from some of my younger patients. Um, you know, protein powders, um, protein bars, they can be a great way of getting protein. But relying heavily on these um, extra uh, forms of protein can actually throw your body into an imbalance. Um, and you lack other important nutrients that otherwise you could get from whole foods. So it's important for you to utilize them as adjuncts, but not necessarily solely rely on protein powders and protein bars. Now, 
many protein products have added sugars and um, added sugars like high fructose corn syrup or artificial sweeteners. And you take something that necessarily was supposed to be something healthier and uh, you disrupt it so much that it causes weight gain and some most of the time disrupting your healthy gut micro um, microbiome. And that's when problems start. Now, using you know, like overusing protein powders that can lead to gastrointestinal distress, specifically constipation. Um, if people who have lactose intolerant, they may, um, intolerance, they may face, uh, diarrhea, bloating, gas sometimes when using protein powders. So it's incredibly important to watch, not only just watch where you get your protein supplement, but also to read the label well enough to know exactly what's in the product that you're, um, consuming. If you do choose to have like a protein powder or a shake or a bar or a supplement, it's important to use that while having a healthy diet. It's not to replace your healthy um, diet or your, your replace the foods that you're supposed to be consuming. It's, it's just to adjunct to it. And it's important to encourage people to talk with their doctor about um, whether protein supplementation is even right for their health as well. Right. So it seems like there's lots of ways for us to consume protein. What are you advising your patients about how much protein we should consume on a daily basis? Okay, that's a great question. Um, well, you know, the recommended daily allowance um, for an average adult is anywhere between 50 and 60 grams of protein a day. Roughly, if you're a math person, you want to kind of calculate how much is right for you. Roughly about seven grams of protein per 20 uh, pounds of weight. That's typically how much you would be able to consume. So for example, someone who's 150 pounds should aim for about 54 grams of protein. Someone who's 200 pounds should aim for about 70 grams of protein. Um, but there's certain situations where you would need more, like athletes, uh, people training for marathons, heavy bodybuilders, they tend to need, um, you know, more, more protein to help build the muscle, to help muscle repair after workouts. And that's when you would start to do a little bit more protein supplementation or eating, consuming more protein. Got it. Is it possible to consume too much protein? Oh, it is. It absolutely is. And this is usually when I get to have the conversation, unfortunately, with patients about how much protein they should they consume. Consuming too much protein can lead to kidney disease. Um, and so you need to make sure that everything is balanced. If you already have kidney disease, you need to speak with your, um, your physician to make sure this is even a good idea. Um, and like I said earlier, don't make this protein supplementation or protein be the sole meal that you eat. When you sit down to eat, you need to eat very balanced, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, whole grains, um, and protein. All of them are in equal portions and should be sufficient for you. So what happens if you don't get enough protein? So protein plays such a big, important role in our, in our um, metabolism and things. So a lack of protein can lead to um, weaker immune system, more frequent illness, and more frequent infections. Um, it can lead to decrease in muscle mass um, and, you know, weakness in your ability to um, carry out certain tasks. So it's such an important building block for every cell in our body that it's important for you to maintain healthy protein balance in your diet. Oh, and also one last thing. Lack of protein or decreased in amounts of protein can lead to thinning hair, weakened nails, brittle hair loss. So you want to definitely make sure that um, you're, you're balanced. Yeah. It sounds like it's very important not to have too much, not to have too little, and to work with your doctor to try to figure out what that perfect balance is if you're trying to make tweaks to your diet. Exactly. And in, in taking into consideration everybody's health history is a little bit different. And at a certain point, you need to make sure that that's right for you. Thank you so much for this great information, Dr. Youssef. We learned a lot about the importance of balancing the amount of proteins that we take in. And we learned a lot about how protein sources can affect our body's health and function. Here are the top takeaways. One, 
Protein is an essential macronutrient that helps repair and build our body's tissues, but not all protein sources are created equal. Two, animal-based proteins are complete, but often are higher in fats and cholesterol, depending on the source. Plant-based proteins may require more variety to ensure you're getting all the essential amino acids, but they offer extra nutrients that support overall health. Overall, your diet should consist of two-thirds of plant-based proteins. Three, protein powders, shakes, or supplements can be convenient, but they shouldn't replace a healthy, balanced diet consisting of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Four, the average adult should aim to get 50 to 60 grams of protein a day, or seven grams of protein for every 20 pounds of body weight. Extreme athletes and older adults may need to increase their intake. Balance is very important. Five, make sure you're not getting too much. Consuming too much protein can lead to kidney problems. And six, signs you're not getting enough protein include muscle loss, fatigue, thinning hair or brittle nails, and dry skin. For more information about lifestyle medicine from our experts, visit kp.org slash doctor and listen to more episodes of Healthier You wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with others who may find it helpful. Thank you from all of us at Kaiser Permanente. Be well.